weekend um, that we would go in on Monday and we would tell our bosses that we were give her two week notice basically. And um, we actually recorded that walk to the to to our office and I think since then we've both been on this like startup diet where we've lost like a good amount of weight or whatever and but we're in a totally better place um, because of it. And um, what we what we try and do or what our goal at Pulsey is to create products that encourage a more mindful lifestyle. And we do that through products that we design and the messages that we share with the world. Uh, the first product we ever made was a t-shirt with a holster position pocket on it. So, and that's where we get the name Holsty, holster pocket. <laughs> Put it together. Um, and we, so for example, t-shirts are made from, uh, from hemp and organic cotton. Everything's cut and sewed in, in LA. All the products that we make are pretty much made in the US. The only time that we make a product outside the US if there was a really compelling reason to do that. For example, the wallet that we make is, uh, is, mi is, is minimal, functional, and we're kind of looking at the wallet as this is something that you have with you no matter where you go all the time. It's, it can be potentially a constant reminder of something positive um, or negative if you don't have a lot of cash or money. <laughs> but we took that opportunity to think about, okay, well, what would our ideal wallet look like from beginning to end? And we realized that just like a house, if you have a massive house, you put a lot of shit in it. If you have a massive wallet, you put a lot of stuff you really don't need in it. And so we said, well, how can we cut down the wall to be as minimal as possible and still have like the compelling story and the aspects that we hold very close to our own values? And so we came across an NGO in Delhi where um, they actually work with people who are referred to as rag pickers. And it's, it's not a great name, but it's commonly used term for people who go around the streets of Delhi, for example, and they collect all different types of trash and they find people to sell it to, who then sell to someone else, who sell to someone else, and they really don't make any money, and it's a really uh, discouraging degenerative cycle for those people. And what this NGO does is they work directly with the rag pickers. They buy the plastic bags from those people, so then the, those people who are collecting the garbage are uh, making much more money than they normally would. And also the NGO is saving quite a bit of money, and as a result, they're able to take those extra funds and put them into um, like mobile healthcare units and educational opportunities for those families so they can break that cycle and those families don't have to decide should my child come to work with me and pick up trash or can I actually afford to send them to school. So we worked with them to make a wallet that's made primarily out of plastic bags that are collected on the streets of Delhi. But what we try and do is in addition, you know, so it's great to be able to use incredible materials and really consider the people you're impacted uh, or impacted by the designs that you make. But one thing that was very clear for, for us early on is doing those things is fantastic but to do them while not sacrificing quality or good design is arguably as important or even more important because the most damaging thing you can do is try and create all those supply chains and plans and have like a thousand wallets sitting on a shelf that no one really wants to buy. Um, so that was, that's been a very important criteria for us from day one. It's how do you make things that, are, that have all those different criteria involved but also are things that are just really beautiful. People are buying them because they're gorgeous, sexy, or cool and not because, and everything else is just a bonus. And that's kind of the, that's the, uh, that's the goal we've had since day one. Um, and one of the things that we did though, in terms of like messaging, putting things into the world, one of the first things we did when we started our company was ask ourselves, what does it mean to live a successful life in non-financial terms? And we have been thinking about this a lot. And Ankit, who's here um, on our team, he knows that we have like a lot of very in-depth conversations, like we all sit at the same table and we talk a lot about um, you know, what is, what are we doing in our company, what is the purpose, are we like really following what, we, are we doing what we'd love to do, and if not, let's talk about doing something else. And we have those conversations literally on a daily basis. And this was kind of the genesis of that, where we sat down at Union Square and we were challenging each other, what is the most important thing for us, what are the most, most important things that we want in our lives. And um, it kind of actually came very fluidly, we realized, okay, well, you know, we love to eat, so always being able to make sure we're like appreciating the food that we have, meeting new people, um, traveling, being open to new ideas, uh, relationships, love, like these are things that we realize are very, very important and they don't have any like financial, like childlike boundaries pretty much. You don't need to like hit a certain level to get that, to get to that point. So we define for ourselves, as long as we're able to do these things, we're living a successful life. And Holsey pretty much became the vehicle for us to do that. And when we started our company, we, we wrote this, we put it on our website, put it on our like our about page at the time. There's pretty much no one with the exception of like maybe our parents or family members coming to our website. So no one no we didn't really think that like our intention was not to like do anything other than just to be like a real reminder for ourselves. 
And um, I remember one at one point, about six weeks in, someone was like, your manifesto is like blowing up on Tumblr. And I was like, what? No one knows about who we are. And then we went to like, and then on Twitter, there was like, people were tweeting in languages that didn't really recognize, but it just had da 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 And I was like, oh my god, what the hell is going on? And then like Facebook. And, um, and it's had like a pretty incredible, totally unexpected viral experience. Something that like, if we had tried our artists work with the best branding and marketing people in the world, we would never have been able to hit what we did. We had over 15 translations that were just produced by our community alone of this manifesto. And um, we've totally been blown away by it. And since then we've had stories that people have sent us in, like multiple stories on a weekly basis about what they've done differently or how it's inspired them to change their own lives. And um, we're totally blown away by this because this is literally something we wrote for ourselves and uh, it's impacted so many other people beyond us around the world. And um, we've taken that and so we started to we start to like approach other designers who we've always had a really strong appreciation for and ask them, if you were to look at this uh, manifesto, and uh, how would you reinterpret, how, would, how could you reimagine the words of this manifesto? Um, because it's really easy to kind of get set and just that simple design, which, which for us, we feel like it's just been popping up in numerous, numerous places. But we were really curious how other people saw the manifesto. So we challenged other artists to take that, to take different lines and, and reinterpret either a line or this is the entire manifesto, which I'll show you in a video. Um, real quick, he basically, so we work with all these designers and they have interpreted the manifesto and done a video about it. 